And welcome to Faith at Work, the Christ-centered teaching and preaching ministry of Dr. Carrie Hedgepeth. The Bible says, Seek the Lord while He may be found. Call upon Him while He is near. Turn to me and be saved, for I am God and there is none other. And now, Dr. Carrie. Well, hello again and welcome to Faith at Work Ministry. My name is Carrie Hedgepath and it is my privilege to sit here each week, or sometimes stand here, and to share and to preach and to teach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's always my prayer. It's always my prayer. And I might add, it's always the prayer of those who regularly watch this ministry. And we pray that God will use this ministry to draw someone that is unsaved to the Lord Jesus Christ and that they would be saved. And also that someone who is already saved and is watching this program or has just tuned in, that God would perform a great work in their life and their eyes would be open to his purpose for their life and that they would go out and do great things for the Lord and for the glory of God. And I mean that with all my heart. Only God knows how much time I have left. And only God knows how much time you have left. So let's pray together. Let's think together about what would the Lord have me to do. I'm praying for you. And I know that many of you are praying for me. So today I want to direct your attention to uh, Hebrews chapter One, and I'm going to read the first three verses, and then I want to read uh, chapter 11, verse 1. And it all has to do, in my heart and in my mind, it's a Christmas story. (laughs) It's Christmas time, so, uh, you know, I, I just want to read this to you, and then I want to share some things with you. Listen carefully. Long ago... At many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. Now, the writer of Hebrews is writing his letter to the Jewish people. And he begins by saying, a very long time ago, God spoke to our ancestors. He spoke to our people. He spoke to his people, the Jewish people. And he spoke to them by the prophets. But in these last days, and some of you that may not know Scripture or understand these things, we've been living in the last days for the last 2,000 years. So he says, but in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things. Through him also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God. He's talking about Jesus, by the way. He is the radiance of the glory of God. He is the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Now listen to... Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now, what does substance mean? It means believing in God. Faith, saving faith, gives us the assurance. It is the assurance of the things that we hope for. And what do we hope for? We hope that Jesus, we hope, we look forward to. We know, and, and, and our hope is in Him, and we believe with all of our heart that Jesus is going to return one day. And so our faith is the assurance of the things that we hope for, that we believe in, and it is the evidence, the conviction, if you please, of the things that we have not seen. I've said this so many times, I, I repeat it because someone may have never heard it before. You know what faith is to me? You know how I interpret that? 
I interpret it this way. I believe with all my heart. I have the absolute assurance. And my hope is this. My belief is this. That everything the Bible says happened from Adam to Jesus and then after Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus and the work of the apostles and the book of Revelation, I believe with all my heart that all the things that the Bible says happened, happened. And I believe with all my heart that everything that the Bible says is going to happen is going to happen. That's what that means. Now, the best way for me to introduce the lesson today, and the lesson, by the way, is entitled Five Truths. And under that, I have put in parentheses five statements of faith. These are the things that I believe. And the reason I believe them is because the Bible says it. And the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, has given me in my heart the ability to read this word and to believe it and to trust in it. So I believe that what I'm about to say to you is right out of the Bible, and I want you to hear these things. But I can't help but use this as somewhat of an illustration or an opening because uh, it is Christmas time. And the other night I turned on television and I was looking for something good to watch. And I found the Hallmark Channel. Uh, the Hallmark card people. I'm not doing a commercial for them, but it is true that they have good, clean shows, movies for all the family to watch. But on this particular program, and I got in on the very end of it. I'm telling you the truth. I got in on the very end of it. It was a Christmas story, obviously, because this is the scene that I saw, and this was all that I saw. After I saw it, I thought, well, that's about all I wanted to see. But it was the last scene was a, 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 just a great, big, beautiful, multicolored Christmas tree. And this young man and this beautiful young woman, young girl, young lady, was standing there arm in arm, and they were looking at that Christmas tree. And it was shining, and it was beautiful, no question about that. And everybody around the Christmas tree had a glass of punch in their hand or, or wine or whatever they had. Anyway, they had a glass in their hand. And so they're all smiling. And then there's Santa Claus, and he's standing there with those beautiful rosy cheeks with his little glasses on, a beautiful Santa, perfect Santa. And he's so happy, and he's smiling, and everything is centered on him, of course, and that tree. And this young man standing there looking at that scene with his girlfriend, the girl of his life, the girl of his dreams on his arms. And these were the final words of that movie. He said to her, look, this is what, <laughs> this is what Christmas is all about. That was the sweetest scene you've ever seen. It was a blessing. And everybody was so happy. But let's deal with reality. Let's deal with the truth. Christmas is not about Santa Claus. It's not about Christmas trees. It's not about everybody gathering together and having a drink and being happy. Christmas is about the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to share with you five things that I believe to be absolute truth. And let me say this to you. I don't think in this short time that I'm going to get through all five truths. I'm not going to try to get through them. I'm just going to share with you today and maybe next week, well certainly next week if I don't get through, these five truths. And with all my heart and with those of you who are watching me and love the Lord and you love me and you love what we're trying to do here, I know that you're praying with me that hearts, lives will be changed because of the things that I'm about to say. Here it is. The Bible says in Luke chapter 2, 
Fear not. Don't be afraid. For behold, listen, look. I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. <clears throat> now let me say something right up front. And, and maybe I shouldn't say this because <clears throat> this might, you might get your mind on this and won't listen to the rest of what I'm going to say, but I want you to listen carefully. God does not save people because Jesus was born in a manger to a virgin in Bethlehem. He saves people because that same baby grew up and became a man and died on the cross for sinners. Someone has written, God doesn't save us because he loves us. He saves us because Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. Now there's much more to it than that. But that's a powerful statement. That'll, that'll get somebody's attention. So here's one of the great truths I want to share with you. The greatest event, the greatest event in human history is Jesus Christ coming into this world. Jesus was God and he still is God. That's why the angel said, call his name Emmanuel which means God is with us. The Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory full of truth and grace as the only begotten of God. The only begotten God of God is what the Greek really says. In 2 Corinthians 5, verse 19, which we've looked at before, and we'll look at it again because it's a great verse. The Bible says that God was in Christ. God was in Christ reconciling, restoring, if you please, bringing back, drawing people unto himself. What kind of people? Sinners. God was in Christ reconciling the world, sinners, unto himself. Jesus is God. And Jesus came into this world to forgive sin. No one can forgive sin but God. Listen, think about this now. No one can forgive sin but God, Jesus, forgave sin. Jesus forgives sin. But no one can forgive sin but God. Jesus forgives sin. Some of you are listening to me right now and you're saying, well, I've heard of Jesus all my life and I've heard all these stories, but I hadn't thought about that. Only God can forgive sins. And yet Jesus forgives sin. In the Bible, Jesus said to a man, your sins are forgiven. And those Pharisees said, who does he think he is? He makes himself out to be God. Only God can forgive sin. <laughs> Bingo. Only God can forgive sin. And Jesus came to forgive sin. And he forgives sin. He gave his life for my salvation. He gave his life for your salvation. He gives forgiveness. He gives peace and assurance. Would you like to have the peace of knowing that your sins have been forgiven? Would you like to have the peace and the assurance that you are saved and when you die, you're going to go 
to heaven and be with God, which means you're not going to go to hell and be with Satan? Would you like to be saved? Would you like to have, and and I'm telling you this, I, I wished I could jump up and shout, but I can't. The cameras would miss me. And you wouldn't want to see that anyway. But Jesus gives joy, unspeakable joy. Would you like to have joy and peace and assurance and salvation? And would you like to have purpose for your life? Real purpose. Would you like to would you like to be called and given a work to do that is the greatest work in all this world? You know that's what I'm doing right now. The greatest work in all this world is to preach and to teach and to share and to testify about the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of you are watching right now. You may be laying on the couch. You may be sitting in a recliner. You may be in jail. You may be in prison. You may be in a hospital. You may be in a hotel room. And and really, you may be making a lot of money. You may not be making any money. But you have no real purpose. You ask the question, is this all there is to life? Let me tell you something. When Jesus Christ saved me, my feet never hit the ground after that. And that's, that was in 1973, and it's 2012 now. You do the math. My feet has never hit the ground. I didn't have much purpose. All I had, the only purpose I had in life was getting ahead, was making money, was providing for my family, was trying to keep up with all my old fraternity brothers in college, to having the right house, the right car, All those things. And Jesus saved me and my life completely turned around. And I'm saying all that to you because there's somebody watching me. And you need a brand new life. (laughs) You need to become a brand new creation. You need purpose and you need joy. And you need some assurance. And I'll tell you, that's why Jesus came. To save you and to change you. Paul said, if Jesus comes into your heart, if you ever receive Jesus, he will make you a brand new creation. Can I just stop right here and say Merry Christmas? That's what Christmas is all about. He gives life. And he gives life to those who trust in him and obey him. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There's only one way to life. There's only one way for eternal life. There's only one way to God, and that's Jesus. Pilate said to Jesus, what is truth? And the truth is that Jesus Christ came into this world to establish the kingdom of God to save men from their sins and to bring them into the family of God. My prayer right now, as I speak, my prayer, and I know it's the prayers of others. They may be sitting there with you. They may be somewhere off. They may be a hundred miles from you or a thousand miles from you, but they know you. They've been knowing you all their life and they're praying for you. And their prayer is that you would receive the truth the absolute truth that Jesus Christ saves and that he gives life. And he gives life abundantly. More than you can cup running over. This is the truth. This is what Christmas is about. God came into this world. God came in the person of Jesus. The Bible says, for unto you a child is born, unto you a son is given, And the government will be upon his shoulders. In other words, Jesus will carry the world. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Christmas is all about the wonderful Lord Jesus Christ. By the way, Jesus Christ, 
after he died for your sins? God, by the power and the work of his Holy Spirit, raised that dead Jesus. He died. He didn't faint. He didn't just pass out. He didn't pretend. Lay There he was, lying in the tomb, dead. And God raised him from the dead. This Jesus, who came in this world, God, who came in this world and became a man and died for our sins. Three days later, God raised him from the dead. Now, the reason I'm saying that is because I want you to understand that the Jesus that I follow, the Jesus that saved me, the Jesus that I worship, the Jesus that I preach and teach, and the Jesus that I am praying with all my heart will save you and that you will turn, come to him. Listen to me. He is alive. <laughs> he, is a li- he is living. You can talk to him and he'll talk to you. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised, and if I may say this, I believe he's talking to you right now. Just like, you know, the Apostle Paul met the living Lord Jesus, the risen Christ. Paul was on his way to Damascus. He wasn't looking for Jesus. He was on his way to Damascus to destroy, to to arrest, and eventually kill, if need be, those people who were following this dead Jesus. And the living Lord Jesus Christ appeared to Paul. His name was Saul at the time. And when Jesus saved him, he changed his name. And he said to to Paul, Saul, he said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And, and, And Saul said, who are you, sir? And he said, I am Jesus whom you're persecuting. And then Saul said, Lord, God, you're alive. What what do you want me to do? (laughs) Isn't that beautiful? I'm telling you, he is alive. And then let me say truth number two. Truth number two is Jesus is our access to God. Paul said, I mean, uh, yeah, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ said, no one comes to the Father except by me. You cannot come to the Father except through Jesus Christ. Jesus is our access to God. That's what the Bible says, and that is the truth. Je- Jesus said, I and the Father are one with the same. Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Jesus said, this is eternal life. You want to be saved? You want to have Jesus as your Lord and your Savior? You want to go to heaven? Listen to what Jesus said. Jesus was talking to his heavenly Father. And Jesus said, this is eternal life. That they know you, the one true God. And Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. If you want to know, if you want to know God, if you want to know God as your Father, if you want to know Jesus as your Lord and your God, turn to Him, believe in Him, believe the Word of God. And those of you, if you truly believe and you trust in God, do you realize? Now just, just think about this. Do you realize that your name, your name, Gary Hedgebeth, Charlie Johnson, do you realize that your name and your life and your needs and your circumstances are on the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ every day? That Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and God the Father, listens and talks with each other every day about you. The Bible says Jesus is now in heaven 
making intercession for us. We're on his list. We're on his mind. So when you pray, Jesus said, say, our Father. I'm going to have to stop now. We'll pick this up next week. But before I close, let me just ask you this. Please stay with me next week. And then right now, if your heart is being, if you feel a tugging or a pulling or a pushing of your heart to turn to God through Jesus Christ, that's the Holy Spirit of God doing His work in your life. And I pray with all my heart that right now in this Christmas season that you will surrender your life, surrender your sins, and give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's my prayer. I look forward to seeing you next week. Now, I hate so bad to change the subject, but I do need to do this. There are many people that are watching this program that... uh, pray for us. They write me letters. And there are a few that financially support this ministry. Now it's not my responsibility to raise money. I really mean that. I don't believe in that. It's my responsibility to be faithful to God Almighty and to preach the Word of Christ. And it's God Almighty's responsibility to raise the money to pay for all this. And how does he do that? He speaks to the hearts of people that listen on a regular basis. And then they respond to him. Listen to me carefully. If God is speaking to your heart through this ministry, if you're being blessed by this ministry, if you believe in me and you're trusting in me to be, to be honest and to preach the word of God, Would you listen to the Lord and would you support us financially and with your prayers? Um, I need to hear from you. I need to hear from you. The Lord bless you. We'll finish this message next week. Please watch us and pray for us. I'll see you next week. The Lord bless you. We sincerely hope today's message has both encouraged and challenged you to seek a closer walk with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please write Dr. Carey and let him know you're praying for him. The address is on the screen. Hearing from you is so very important. Thank you for watching, and remember, until next time, pray for Dr. Carey and plan to invite a friend to watch. This is Dee Hopkins saying goodbye, and may the Lord Jesus be your master.